Okay, we're going to start chapter six now, and chapter six and chapter seven sort of blend into one, but they've just been split up into two chapters. So chapter one, chapter six, sorry, is going to just introduce some new ideas, and then chapter seven is going to go a lot further with it. Um, so it's similar to some of the trig chapters in year one, but we've added some new trig functions to the mix. Okay, and the, the three new trig functions that we're going to introduce are called sec, cosec, and cot, and we'll tell you a bit more about those later. We're going to be thinking about, first of all, understanding them and what their graphs look like. Then we're going to be focusing on solving and proving questions. And then we'll also think about some inverse trig functions and their domains and ranges, which links to some of the stuff that you've been doing with Miss Chalmers. So we're just going to get started really quickly with what these new trig functions are. So I've said we have a new member of the trig family. So we obviously know what cos x is here, and I don't necessarily need to have these brackets. I could have just written it as cos x. Either of those things is fine. And then I've also shown you how we can write things like this, that you could have cos 2x or cos squared x. And what that actually means is cos of x all squared. And that's just something that you need to make sure that you're familiar with, that you're taking the whole thing and squaring it. But because mathematicians are lazy, they just decided rather than always having to write brackets, they could just write it as cos squared x. Again, the bracket around the x here isn't super necessary. And so I've said that the latter form of this is particularly useful for differentiation when we get to that later on. So even though we're lazy and usually write this way of doing it, we will sometimes write it in this way because it's going to help us see what to do with differentiation. And then we've got um, this form here where we have cos inverse of x or you'll also know that that can be written as arc cos x. And this is where we really need to be careful, because the minus 1 here doesn't actually mean a power of minus 1, unlike here, where the power did mean a power of 2. This is kind of a, it's an unfortunate historical accident. Arc cos is actually the notation that I prefer because of this reason, because this minus 1 is actually talking about doing the inverse. And when you're doing inverse functions, the minus 1 is meaning go in reverse but it confuses us with the fact that the power of minus 1 actually means reciprocal. So this one does not mean the reciprocal of cos that is down here. The thing that means the reciprocal of cos is called sec x, and sec is actually, is actually short for second, okay, for the second of x. So we have a convenient way of representing the reciprocal of the trig function. So the reciprocal of 1 over cos x is called sec x. And we're going to try and introduce some more of these in just a second. So the reciprocal trigonometric functions, these are not to be confused with the inverse trig functions, which are the ones that will give you the angle. So sec is short for second. I've got brackets all over the place here. You don't need to have brackets. They're not required, but they can be used if you want them. And cosec is the reciprocal function of sine. 1 divided by sine x is called cosec x. And cot x is 1 divided by tan x or cos x over sine x. And we often use this version, the 1 over tan x, because it tends to be a bit more useful. When we tend to do proof questions, it tends to be useful to have things with cos x and sin x rather than 1 over tan x. But why is this, uh, why is this the reciprocal of, of tan? Sine over cos. Good, because tan is usually sine over cos. So when we take the reciprocal of that, we know with fractions, you just flip them over to be able to do this. So sec is short for second. Cosec is short for cosecond. And um, cot is short for cotangent. And the way that I remember these is to look at the third letter of them to help you remember which one they go with. So the third letter of sec matches with cos. The third letter of cosec matches with sine. And obviously cot is going to go with tan, but it still works that the third letter goes like this. Now, I'm wondering if we can think now about the reciprocals of the reciprocal trigonometric functions. So on this next page that I've got here, I'm going to do the reciprocals of the reciprocal functions. What do we think the reciprocal of 1 over sec x is? Cos x. Yeah, it's cos x, OK? 1 over 1 over cos x 
is actually telling you to take the reciprocal of the reciprocal, which gets you back to the original function, which is just going to be cos x. So that's useful to know that if you have do the reciprocal, it is kind of a self-inversing process. If you take the reciprocal and then you take it again, you get back to where you started. So I've now taken the reciprocal of cosec x, which we think will be sin x. And the reciprocal of cot x is tan x. So I just wanted to point this out because sometimes this doesn't get pointed out and people come up with equations where sec x is in the denominator and they don't realize that if sec x is in the denominator, they can bring it up to the numerator and turn it into a cos x. Just like if you have cos x in the numerator, you could pull it down to the denominator as sec x as well, okay? So it's just adding in some new definitions. You're probably thinking, why? Why are we having to introduce these new definitions? And the reason that we're introducing them is because they help us to do more proof kind of questions and they pop up in lots of other areas and it just kind of saves us having to write one over all of the time. Okay, so we're going to do some calculations. You do have a calculator in your A-level exams, but you should know how to calculate certain values if you need, if you needed to. This is for exercise 6A. We're not going to do 6A. This is, us, this is us doing the working of it because we don't need to do it in much detail. Okay, we're going to do all of these in radians and we're going to see how we might be able to calculate these. So we've got cot of pi over 4, which is going to be, you can't actually type this into your calculator easily. I don't think you can. I think you can't do it very easily. So if you're going to type it into your calculator, you would type in 1 over tan of pi over 4. But I'm hoping you know what tan, over pi of four, tan of pi over 4 is. Tan of 45, anyone? One. 1. So it's just 1 over 1, and it's just 1. And then we have sec of pi over 4. Sec of pi over 4 is going to be 1 over what? Cos. 1 of cos of pi over 4. Now, you can either write 1 over whatever it is, or we can just do the reciprocal of it. What is cos of pi over 4? Root 2 over 2, or 1 over root 2 is probably the way I would have asked you to remember it. So it's 1 over 1 over root 2. If this is confusing to you, why not just do the reciprocal of 1 over root 2, which is 1 over root 2. Flip it. No, just root 2. 1 over root 2, reciprocal, root 2. And the way you can see it from this rather confusing looking fraction is to get rid of this fraction within the fraction, you can multiply the top and bottom by root 2. You'd have root 2 over 1. Okay, so we've got cosec of pi over 3. That's going to be 1 over sine of pi over 3. It's the reciprocal of sine of pi over 3. What is sine of pi over 3? Good. Root 3 over 2, but we're going to do the reciprocal. So it's 2 over root 3. Let's see if we can do this next one without... Oh no, let's, let's still write it down. So we have cot of pi over 6. That's 1 over tan of pi over 6. What is tan of pi over 6? You should know these. Root 3 over 3. So the reciprocal is 3 over root 3. If you were to put it in your calculator, this one and this one, they would have given you the answers in rationalized form. I don't mind leaving them like this, but if you, if you wanted to, you could rationalize them so they didn't have that denominator. Okay, so 1 over, sorry, cosec of 5 pi over 6 is 1 over sine of 5 pi over 6. Now, I don't mind if you wanted to use a calculator for this, but I want to try and push some of you to think how you could do this without a calculator. What is sine of 5 pi over 6 equivalent to? It's equivalent to sine of pi over 6 because of the relationship pi minus theta. So this is the same as one of sine of pi over 6. Sine of pi over 6 is a half, so the reciprocal of that is 2. Now, I don't mind if this is, if you're like, whoa, I don't know what's going on. This is really difficult. I'm putting this in here to push people who have memorized the facts. If you need to, you can type these things in the calculator. But I would encourage you to try. This is just a bit of a recap of how these things are all connected together. Cot of pi over 3 is 1 over tan of pi over 3. What is tan of pi over 3? From memory, anyone? 
it is root 3, so it's just 1 over root 3. And sec of pi over 6, what does sec link with? Cos, so it's going to be 1 over cos of pi over 6. That's cos of 30 if we're thinking of degrees. What's cos of 30? It's root 3 over 2, so it's going to be 2 over root 3 because it's a reciprocal that we've got here. Like I said, you could do these on a calculator. If this kind of thing like scrambles your brain, like try and think about how we're doing it, but remember you've got a calculator there as a backup. Okay, so we have cosec of pi over 2. That's 1 over sine, because it's the third letter, of pi over 2. Pi over 2 is 90. So what's the sine of 90? 1. So it's 1 over 1. It's just 1. And then we have for our last one, sec goes with cos. So it's 1 over cos of 5 pi over 3. Cos of 5 pi over 3 is the same as um, 2 pi minus that, just pi over 3. Because with cos, the relationship is that it's 2 pi minus this one. And 2 pi minus 5 over 3, 2 minus 5 over 3 is 1 over 3. So it's 1 over cos of pi over 3. And cos of pi over 3 is cos of 60, a half. So the reciprocal of a half is 2. Okay. So if you need to type these into your calculator, they don't have, I don't think they do, not very easy to find, they don't have a way of typing in sec, cosec, or cot. So if you were going to type them into your calculator, you would be typing in these things that I'm circling right now. These are the things that you would type into your calculator. But if you're going to be trying to do like speedy maths, that's quite difficult to type in. And I think it's better to see if you can do it without that. Did you have a question, Harun? You know the cot pi over 6, wouldn't that be just root 3? Yes, so 3 over root 3, if you were going to finish simplifying that, is just root 3. In my head, I did um, pi over 6, or tan pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. And then I meant to just say just root 3. So yes, yeah. yes, correct. Yeah, there's many, uh, they all, I haven't finished some of them off. Like, I haven't finished off what they would be if they were rationalised. So if you were rationalising them, you'd come up with something a bit different. So I'm just going to pause the video at that point, because that's exercise 6.